Hey folks, I thought it would be fun to put together a quick video showing you how you can build a talking application with both Spring and Alexa. Specifically, I'm going to talk about how you might build a Spring API using Spring WebFlux and then put a talking front end on it using Alexa and Alexa's Ask or Alexa SDK, Alexa's Skill Kit SDK. In this video, what we're going to do so we're going to build a simple jokes API using Spring WebFlux. Nothing fancy, just an API that's going to produce a random joke that Alexa can, can speak to the user. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build an Alexa front end on that. And this is, we're going to build it simple at first, and then we'll have it integrate with the Spring backend. And then I'm going to show you how to run both the Spring and Alexa pieces of the application locally and debug them using breakpoints and, and making changes as we go and things like that. So with no further delay, let's write some code. We're going to start by writing the jokes API in Spring. I'm going to use VS Code uh, to build the Spring portion of the application. You know, it's just one of many options. I uh, often use the um, Spring Tool Suite, the um, the IDE based on Eclipse to do my work, but I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code today and for both the Alexa and the Spring side of the application. So to get started, I do have the Spring Tools extension plugged into VS Code. So I'm going to open up the Tools palette. I'm going to say create a new Spring Maven project with a Spring initializer. I'm going to use the latest version of Spring Boot 2.6.1. I'm going to use Java. I am going to say com.habuma as the group ID, uh, jokes as the artifact ID. I'm going to build an executable jar ultimately, use Java version 11, and I'm going to use previously used dependencies, specifically Spring Reactive Web and Spring Boot DevTools. Reactive Web is the Spring Boot library that we're going to base everything on. This is the, more, more accurately, it's the Spring Boot starter we're going to base everything on that's going to enable us to develop a reactive API. And then Spring Boot DevTools is going to enable us to make changes and see those changes reflected when the application automatically restarts after we hit save on our changes. So I'm going to build this in a directory called, actually I may already have it laying around, let's see. Um, no, I'll do this. We'll build a new one. Spring Alexa Jokes. Great. So we're going to generate into this folder. We'll give it a few seconds to get that going. We'll open the project. And we're pretty much ready to go. All right. Again, the API could could be flushed out in any, you know, any, any number of ways. Uh, the way I'm going to do it, though, is I am going to build a brand new controller. We're going to call it, there we go, we're going to call it jokescontroller.java. And in the jokescontroller.java, I need to actually put it in the right package, it looks like. Let's see. Of course, it's going to, you need to make sure it's in the jokes package, not in the other. So I had to move it. There we go. I am going to make this a REST controller. It is going to handle requests that are rooted at the path jokes. And it's going to handle GET requests for random. So jokes slash random. And it's going to return a mono, which is a reactive type that, that can contain either zero or one item, or will carry zero or one item. In this case, the item will just be a simple string. So it'll be a random. And here I'm going to say mono.just to create that mono. And I'm going to pass it just an empty string to start with. We'll fill that empty string in with something more interesting here in a moment. Uh, specifically, I could pull my jokes from anywhere, really. They could come from a database. They could come from another service. I could pull them from maybe some file in the file system. All of these are great choices. Uh, but to keep things simple, I'm just going to declare the set of jokes that we're going to draw from as a constant, as a private static final string array. Jokes. So I've got three jokes in there now. 
more than enough than, uh, for what we need to do. We'll add a few more a little bit later. I'm also going to need a random object to choose these jokes with. So I'm going to say random, random equal new random. And with this random object, I'm going to say string chosen joke equal jokes random.nextint jokes.length. And that should do it. That should pick a joke for me. Uh, oh, I, I guess I do need to import random. Let's fix that. And then instead of returning the empty string, I'll return the chosen joke in the mono. I'm going to hit save and there, I think we're done. I think we've actually written our API. As simple as it is, we've written our API. Let's run it and see how it behaves. I'm going to do that here with the Spring Boot dashboard. I am going to run it right here in the IDE. You're going to see, after it starts up, you're going to see the Spring ASCII art go by. You're going to see some logging. And at this point, I'm ready to pull up a window and, you know, kick the tires on it. So let me bring over a, an iTerm window to mess with this at, with. And I'm going to say curl localhost 8080 slash joke slash random. And we should get a random joke. So there you go. There's one. Let's try it again. There's another. And there's another. That actually, even though it was random, it actually worked out that it actually hit each one of our three jokes to choose from. Perfect. So we know the API works. And uh, now we're ready to put the Alexa front end on. All right, I'm going to use VS Code to create the Alexa side of the application as well. I have the Alexa, um, so yes, the Alexa Skills Tools Toolkit extension plugged into VS Code. So I'm going to use that to initialize my project. Very similar to the way I use the Spring, uh, the Spring initializer to create a brand new Spring project. To do this, I'm going to go over to uh, create a skill. I'm going to enter the skill name. We'll call it spring jokes. I'm going to give, use the default language of English, um, custom skill model, Alexa hosted skill. All of these defaults are just perfect. The only thing I'm going to do unique here is I'm going to choose a folder in that same directory as the as I place this, the spring side of the application. So under spring Alexa jokes, I'm going to create the skill. It's going to be in the directory spring Alexa jokes, spring jokes. Perfect. Let's create that. And this takes a few moments. It could take uh, anywhere from a minute to two minutes. So rather than wait on it, what I'm going to do is do some post editing on this video before I share it with everybody. So it ought to go really quickly for you. All right, looks like it's almost done. <clears throat> what has happened is it has created an Alexa hosted skill in a AWS code commit Git repository. It's cloning it. Now it's on my local machine and I should be able to start working on it now. So I'm going to close this window. I'm going to expand it. And let's take a quick look at what we have in here. We have the interaction model. This is ENUS, the English US interaction model. We can always add other languages and locales later, but we're going to start with English US. And this is essentially the, the contract, the description of, the, of how the user will interact with the Alexa skill. So I'm going to open that up. And we're going to take a look at it. And you can see the invocation name is Spring Jokes. Coincidentally, uh, or not so coincidentally, it's the same as the, the skill name, the skill project name anyway. So Spring Jokes, this is how we're going to open the skill. This is how I'm going to invoke it. You can kind of think of it as a vocal version of an icon. So on a desktop application, you might double click an icon. Here you will say, Alexa, open Spring Jokes. Or you might say something along the line of, Alexa, ask Spring Jokes to tell me a joke, something like that. We also have several different intents in here. These are the things that you intend for Alexa to do with this skill. Some of them are built-in intents. They start with all capitals Amazon. There's also a Hello World intent. This is a, a built-in intent that's uh, not really an Alexa built-in intent, but it's an intent that comes with this template, this particular project template, to simply say Hello World. We'll leave it alone. We could always delete it if you don't want it, but we're going to leave it alone, leave it in there for now. And instead, I'm going to add my own custom intent for telling jokes. Its name is going to be tell joke intent. Um, we don't need any slots. Slots are essentially parameters that you could pass in to um, 
to Alexa as you're saying something to her, but we don't need any any slots for this particular intent, so I'm going to leave that empty. And then I'm going to give it some sample utterances. Utterances are the things that a user might say to trigger this intent. For example, if you look at the Hello World intent, a user may say hello or how are you, and that would trigger the Hello World intent. Here we might say, tell me a joke. Or we might say, make me laugh. Or we might say, say something funny. And we could probably think of dozens of other potential uh, sample utterances here, but this is a fine start. This will this will help us get started. And then we just need to go write the implementation of the intent. And that's under the Lambda directory where we have some Node.js code, specifically index.js. And you see in here we have different handlers. The handlers take the form of can handle and handle. They have two functions in them. The can handle function, if it returns true, says that I can handle this request. The handle function if the can handle returns true, then the handle function will get invoked. So and you can see in this case, this launch request intent handler or launch request handler will handle the request if the handler the request type is launch request. The hello world intent handler will handle the request if the request type is intent request and the intent name is hello world intent. For our tell a joke intent, we need to do something very similar to Hello World Intent Handler, so I'm going to just copy and paste it just to save a little bit of typing, and I'll just change a few names. So I'm going to change it from Hello World Intent Handler to, to Tell Joke Intent Handler. Likewise, I'm going to have to change what it triggers on with the intent name to from Hello World Intent to Tell Joke. Okay. Now instead of saying Hello World, we want it to tell a joke, so we could say something like this. Um, Ultimately, we want to pull from Spring, but maybe we just hard code one here for now just to see, just to prove to ourselves it works. So instead of saying hello world, maybe we'll say, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Something just dumb like that, okay? Just to test it out, and we don't need a reprompt for this, so I'll, I'll go ahead and delete that commented outline. Now the last thing we need to do before we can try this out is we need to make sure we register the tell joke intent handler with the skill builder and you'll find that at the bottom of the index.js file. You'll see all the other handlers registered there. We'll just add ours to the list and we're ready to go. Great. Now before we can test it, we have to deploy it. Now deploying is different than publishing. Deploying is when you are deploying it to your account so you to your own developer account so you can poke at it and try things out. Publishing is when you make it available to the world. We're not going to publish anything in this in this video though. We're just going to deploy it for our own use and, and uh, testing purposes. So because it's an Alexa hosted skill, the best way to deploy it is to go commit it to the AWS code commit git repository. So I'm going to come over here to the source code control. I'm going to say initial tweaks. That'll be my commit message. And I'll say go. Sync changes. And this will take a few minutes. And while we're waiting, I'll flip on over to the, um, well, once it's done, actually, um, I'll flip on over to the Alexa Skills Kit Deploy Skill, um, and we'll see that everything's all synced up. Now, what's happening is it has been committed to code commit at this point. It's in the Git repository. However, it will take a few minutes for code commit to pick this up for to push it to push the in, the interaction model out to have the interaction model built to have the AWS have the have the lambda code deployed to AWS lambda that's going to take a moment. So rather than um, sit here with with dead air, I'll do some more post editing on this video afterwards. It'll come out a lot quicker for you. All right, by now the skill should have been deployed, the interaction model built, and the Lambda code pushed to AWS Lambda, we should be able to test this now. And the best way to test it is right here in VS Code. Right here under Test Skill, we can open the simulator. Now, rather than talk to an actual Alexa device, which we could still do as long as that device is connected to our developer account, we're just going to type to Alexa using this, this simulator. So I'm going to turn Development on. I'm going to say open Spring Jokes. And she's not going to speak back to us. Instead, she'll respond with something like, welcome. You can say hello or help. Which would you like to try? So I'm going to say, tell me a joke. And she's going to reply with 
Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Of course, this is our hard-coded joke. It is not one we're pulling from the spring back end. So that's what we need to do next is integrate Alexa with spring. All right, to integrate Alexa with Spring, what we're going to need to do is add some logic to the tell, tell joke intent handler to make a get request to the backend Spring API. All right, so let's scroll back up to that. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use a, a library, a REST client library called Axios that um, it, it's, a good, it's a good HTTP client library. There's several out there for JavaScript. I sort of like that one. So let me uh, pull up a window to work in. I'll drag it on over here. We'll go into the Spring Jokes directory. This is where our Alexa skill is at. And you can see there, there's the directory right there. I'm going to use npm to install. I'm going to give it a prefix of lambda because that is where the lambda code, the Node.js code resides. And I'm going to have it install Axios. Now, this is re I'm really kind of stepping ahead of myself here, but just while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and install something else we're going to use a little bit later. I'm going to npm install prefix lambda, just like before, but this time I'm going to add save dev because the thing I'm adding is a development tool, dev development time tool, not so much a push to production kind of tool. It's not, going to, it's not going to run with our application at runtime, it's more for development time. So save dev, and I'm going to add ask SDK local debug. Now I'll explain what the purpose of this, this is a little bit later. I just want to go ahead and add it while I'm here. Great, so I'm going to move this window out of the way. And then now that I have Axios available, I'm going to say const Axios equal require Axios dot default. I'm going to use the default instance of Axios to work with. Back down here in my tell joke handler, I'm going to say uh, Axios dot get HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8080 slash jokes slash random because as you recall that is where my spring API is running at. It's listening for those kinds of requests. I'm going to assign that to a response. Now here's the gotcha though. Axios.get does not return a response object. It returns a promise of a response object. If I try to assign this to a response, I'm going to have to deal with that promise myself. So the, the best way to avoid having to deal with a promise and just getting the response I want is to say await. Await will wait for the promise to be resolved, and then it'll take the resolved object, in this case a response, and assign it to the response for me. But because I'm using await, I also have to make sure that this method, or this function, is annotated with async. But now we're good. We should have a response. Now at this point, it'd probably be good practice for me to check the response's status code and things like that. But I'm going to assume the happy path. I'm going to say const joke equal response dot data. I'm just going to assume we got an HTTP 200 back. If I were really trying to flesh this out, I'd I would check the response code and if there's any errors, deal with those accordingly. But I'm going to assume it's going to work. Great. So instead of saying why did the chicken cross the road? I'm going to return the joke as the output. That is what Alexa will speak back. So with that said, I'd like to kick this off now, but the problem is it won't work because, well, there's a lot of things wrong with it. First off, if I try to deploy this to AWS Lambda, if I, if I went back and did the, a git commit and waited for it to deploy, I'd have to wait a few minutes. And then I promise you it wouldn't work. And the reason is, is out in AWS Lambda where this would be running, it can't see localhost 8080. So there's two ways of fixing this. I can either deploy my Spring application out somewhere in the cloud where Lambda can see it. And for a production level app, when I'm ready to make this live to the world, that is something I would need to do. But that's not what I want to do during the course of this video. Instead, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to leave the Spring API running locally on my machine. And instead of pushing it out there, I'm going to leave it running locally. And I'm going to make Alexa run locally. So here's what I'm going to do. This is why I added that ask local ask SDK local debug library. It's so that I could do this. I can go into run and debug. I'm going to create a launch.json file for my project, Spring Jokes. It is a Node.js launch that I want to do. It's going to pop up this file here. 
I'm going to say add a configuration. I'm going to add the configuration for the Alexa Skills debugger for Node. And I'm going to stick with the North American region. And there, I'm going to save that. And now we're all set. With this in place, I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I don't even need deploy skill at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pick debug Alexa skill. And I'm going to run it. What's going to happen is this bar at the bottom is going to turn red, indicating I'm in debug mode. And it's actually running local. What's happened at this point is it's running the Lambda code for my skill locally, and it has gone out to the deployed Alexa skill and changed a few flags to tell it to look here, to, to direct its request to my local machine. So now I can go to the simulator. I'll reset it just for good measure, and I'll say open spring jokes. And it's going to come back and say welcome. You can say hello or help. Which would you like to try? At which point I can say, tell me a joke. And this time, it's saying, how do you make 7 even? Take away the S. And I know that that's going to my local a uh, Spring API because that's one of the three jokes I had in there. And if I try it again, I can maybe try it a little shorter by saying, ask Spring jokes to make me laugh. Hopefully, it'll give me a different one of my three jokes. But being random, it could give me the same one. No, it didn't. It says, what do you get when you divide the circumference of a jack-o'-lantern by its diameter? You get pumpkin pie. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. But what else can I do with this? Well, it is a that library I added is ask SDK local debug. And I did go to the run and debug section. So maybe there is something more I can do. Let's see what that is. All right, now that I have it running locally, I can do something even more awesome. I can actually make changes to it. For example, let's just say right here, instead of just simply saying the joke, I say something like this. I'll put back ticks around it, and I'm going to say, here is your joke. And then I'll reference the joke as a variable, as a placeholder in that string. I've made the change. I'm going to come up here and hit this. It's going to restart my session. I didn't have to deploy it. I didn't have to push it back out again. I didn't have to do anything like that. All I had to do is just hit re restart. I'm going to reset my session. I'm going to say ask Spring Jokes to tell me a joke. And notice it gave me the jack-o'-lantern joke again, but notice it started with, here is your joke. It gave me that new prefix right before my joke. But again, this is the debugger. What else can I do with this? Well, I can even come in here and maybe put a breakpoint right there. And now when I try it out, I can say, maybe arrow up and do the same thing. And this time, it's going to hop over to the line in the debugger. And I could step over, and I can inspect, and I can do all sorts of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and hit Go, because there is a certain timeout period. If I don't answer it, it's the simulator kind of gets confused. But hopefully, it's not going to this time. And there, here is your joke. How do you make 7 even? You take away the S. So again, I could actually do debugging in here, even though my, my it's an Alexa skill. Now, here's what's even more amazing. That same debugging will also work even if you're using an actual device. So listen to this. I'm going to turn up the volume on my actual Alexa device. Hopefully you can hear it through the microphone. I'm going to say, Alexa, open Spring Jokes. Welcome. You can say hello or help. Which would you like to try? Tell me a joke. And notice it went straight into the debugger, just like before. Where I can step over, I can inspect, and do whatever I would normally do in a debugger. Here is your joke. I asked my dog what's 2 minus 2. He said nothing. Awesome. So even though I'm using an actual Alexa device, because it's routing it back to my local machine, I can still do debugging on it. Now, that's the Alexa side of things. What if I wanted to do some debugging in spring? Well. I can certainly set debugging points here. I can fire off a debugger there. But what I really want to show you is I can also make changes 
here. I can do the same thing without having to deploy anywhere. I just make a quick change here, maybe add a few more jokes, hit save, and because I'm using Spring Boot DevTools, that's going to restart the application automatically for me after I hit save. And so now I have five jokes in there to choose from, and maybe I take two of these out just to increase my odds of hitting one of the newer ones. And I'll hit save again. I have to wait for it to restart, so it's restarted. Let's come back over here. I'm going to take this debug point out, this break point out, so that I don't have to wait on it. I'll try again. Alexa, ask Spring Jokes to make me laugh. Hit send. And I said, here's your joke. I asked my dog, of course, it randomly chose the one joke I left in from before. So let's try it again so we get a, a different one. Oh, twice now, it's giving me that same joke. Let's try one more time. There you go. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. And that is one of the new jokes I added just now to the spring back end. So uh, as you can see, I was able to make changes to the front and the back, and they both work. All right, so what have we done here? We've developed a Spring WebFlux API, very simple one, it, you know, mind you, but a, a Spring WebFlux API. We have it running locally. We were also able to develop an Alexa skill that makes a call to that API to fetch some data and present that data to the user in, in voice. We were also able to run that locally debug it locally and even make changes to it locally and see those changes reflected without, without having to continually push this out to, to a to a, a runtime environment in the cloud. It's a pretty pretty useful feature. It enables you to build and get rapid feedback on your Alexa skill as well as any back end you're working on that, that supports that Alexa skill. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something from it. By all means, leave me something, leave me a comment, letting me know what you thought, and uh, by, you know, be sure and check out my books. Because I have written a book on Spring, and I have written a book on developing Alexa apps. And if you enjoy this video, you're bound to enjoy at least one, if not both, of these books. So check them out. Uh, let me know what you think. And once again, thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something. Mm -hmm.